Aside from a huge rulebook and team playbook, NFL players need to know a few unwritten rules when they enter the league to be respectful of other players and teams. Not everyone knows these rules, but there aren't that many, so they're easy to memorize and follow. Some individuals in NFL history broke these rules, and let's just say the punishments they received were not pleasant. Luckily in this video, we'll learn all the unwritten rules in the NFL, and even see some examples of each one. Rule number one begins with the young guys in the NFL, also known as rookies. Before arriving for your first day with the team, know that the NFL has a big seniority culture and that means respect the veterans on your team. Every rookie coming into the NFL were likely hot shots in college, but that attitude is not good to have in the pros until they are a proven player. Rookies who are loud and obnoxious likely won't gain the respect of their teammates and doing that will make their time in the NFL more difficult. Rookies don't get to pick their seats on the planes or the buses. They have to get to training camp practice earlier than the veterans, and they get served food last as well. When incoming players understand their place on the team and don't get overly frustrated with the preferential treatment older players receive, they are more likely to stick around in the NFL. Rule number two kind of builds on rule number one as it pertains to rookies again. After being drafted or signing with an organization, rookie players should expect to be hazed by the older players on their team. This hazing is conducted every season with the incoming rookie class and the purpose of it is to show that the new guys are dedicated to the team and respect their teammates. The NFL is a brotherhood and the only way to be admitted into it is to go through the treatment as a first year player. Typically, the hazing isn't too bad. It's not like the college fraternity hazing where they force pledges to drink bong water or eat soggy waffles. In the NFL, hazing usually involves forcing the rookies to perform songs and dances during team meetings and carry veteran players pads before and after practice. Sometimes they're required to get ugly haircuts in training camp or pay for team dinners at expensive restaurants. There aren't too many stories of extreme rookie hazing in the NFL, but it is an unwritten rule that incoming players must know. Rule number three is to not stand, dance, or mock the home team's midfield logo if you are the away team. Doing one of those things on game day is a sign of disrespect and most of the time you will receive some form of retaliation. This unwritten rule has been around for some time, just ask head case wide receiver Terrell Owens. Juju Smith-Schuster also did a TikTok dance on the Bengals logo and it eventually backfired on him in-game. This past season, the Tennessee Titans would sometimes get hyped up pre-game on the logos of their opponents. They did it in a regular season game with the Ravens, which caused a commotion, and then in the playoffs, the Ravens beat the Titans confidently and owned those bozos. So NFL players, don't come near your opponent's midfield logo if you don't want any problems. Rule number four is no cheap shot tackles during the game. Like I mentioned earlier, the NFL is a brotherhood and there is mutual respect between players. Cheap shots can injure a player and ruin his career and that's not acceptable in the NFL because everyone is just trying to provide for their families. Cheap shots include a variety of actions during or after a play. Late hits out of bounds, hitting a player that is slowing down going out of bounds, unnecessary hits on players that are far away from the play, blindside blocks that a player can't get ready for, and grabbing of the hair or groin region all fall under the umbrella of cheap shots. Some receivers view tackles at their knees as cheap shots and often talk to opposing defenders about it to prevent serious ankle and knee injuries. The NFL game is really fast paced and cheap shots do sometimes happen, but as long as there isn't malicious intent, there usually isn't a problem on the field. Rule number five is for the offensive lineman in the NFL and it's to always stand up for your quarterback. If there was a late hit on your QB or an overly aggressive sack, you must go in the defense of your cornerback as he is the most important player on your offense. Typically your QB can't afford to be ejected from the game or get injured, so if a defender does something that would be deemed as disrespectful to your QB, you need to stand up for him. As a lineman, you are one of the biggest guys on the field and more replaceable than the QB, so it's your job to be the bodyguard or the intimidator out there. Rule number six goes in tandem with rule number five, and it's that quarterbacks look out for their linemen off the field like the linemen look after their quarterbacks on the field. The QB is oftentimes the highest paid player on an NFL team, so they should use their finances to treat the players that protect them on the football field. This usually means buying your O-line nice gifts in the offseason, pay any fines that they might have incurred during the season, and pay for team dinners as appreciation for them protecting you on the field. 
basically in the NFL, the QB offensive lineman relationship is symbiotic in nature. Rule number seven is something the whole team should know, and it's that when a team is on offense and they're winning by a large margin later in the game, do not go for the first down on a fourth down possession. It comes back to the idea of don't punch your opponent when they're down because it's brutal and unnecessary. At these points in games, all the players just want to get the game over with without any injuries and move on to the next game. Coaches that follow this unwritten rule go even further and put in the backups in the game to minimize injuries. Bless those coaches. Rule number eight is primarily for offensive skill position players to know and follow, but it can also apply to defensive players. It is that if your team is losing by a large margin and you just made a large play or scored a touchdown, don't celebrate it. Typically in the NFL, when a receiver or running back get a first down, they like to celebrate the accomplishment. This is true for when someone scores a touchdown, a kicker kicks a field goal, or a defender catches an interception or recovers a fumble. In the case of your team losing a game badly, celebrating after one of these plays is frowned upon because usually the game is practically over and the play in question doesn't contribute to a win. Keep the celebrations for times when winning is still a possibility. Rule number nine is for end of game scenarios. When the offense is in victory formation, the defensive line shouldn't attempt to stop the kneel down of the QB. Although some people may view this as the defense giving up, it's a major unwritten rule in the NFL because the QB can get injured under all the large bodies around him when he's kneeling. There's also an unwritten rule that the offense cannot fake kneel down, so as long as both sides respect the rules, there aren't any problems. One time, Buccaneers coach Greg Schiano had his defense try to get the ball while Giants QB Eli Manning was kneeling down. And after the game, coach Tom Coughlin cursed Schiano out for the play call. Schiano broke the unwritten rule and had to explain himself. I don't know if that's not something that's done in the, in the National Football League, but what I do with our football team is we fight until they tell us game over. And there's nothing dirty about it. There's nothing uh, illegal about it. You know, we, we crowd the ball. It's like a sneak defense, and we try to knock it, knock it loose. That's just the way I coach and teach our players. Some people are upset about it. And I guess that's, that's the way it goes. I don't have any, any hesitation that that's the way we play. Until a clean, hard football until they tell us the game's over. Rule number 10 is after the end of a game, both starting quarterbacks must meet at midfield to shake hands and exchange pleasantries. This is expected to happen after every single game and it's a show of good sportsmanship. There have been a few times when this rule was broken, but one of the most well known is when the ageless wonder Thomas Brady didn't shake the I mean the hand of Nick Foles after losing Super Bowl 42 to the Philadelphia Eagles. Brady is a notorious sore loser in the Super Bowl and always avoids the question when the Nick Foles handshake comes up. Don't be like Tom Brady, shake the opposing QB's hand no matter if you win or lose. Rule number 11 is similar to rule 10, it's that coaches must also meet at midfield and exchange handshakes. The unwritten rule in this case is that neither coach should show too much emotion during this exchange. Back when Jim Harbaugh was the 49ers head coach, he was excited his team beat Jim Schwartz's Lions and aggressively shook Schwartz's hand which Schwartz felt was disrespectful. They got into a scuffle, and it was a major talking point around the NFL that week. Jim Schwartz, you can see in the white top and the gray pants there, yelling and screaming back at Harbaugh's direction. Harbaugh's in the middle of that somewhere. The Lions and Niners then go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. You're going to see some people putting their helmets back on their heads as if a fight is going to break out. The twelfth and final rule is don't talk about the contracts of other players in the league with other people or the media. All NFL players are fortunate to be some of the highest paid people in the world, and all of their salaries are public information. Just like in many other industries, money is a taboo subject in the NFL, and contract talks should remain out of the locker room or the field. Contract talks are reserved for agents and team representatives because like anywhere, there's jealousy and making teammates who make less money feel jealous isn't a productive way to win football games. In the NFL, Money talks should remain behind closed doors. As you can see, many of these unwritten rules are about respecting your opponent and having good sportsmanship regardless of a win or loss in the NFL. As long as team members remember these 12 unwritten rules, they shouldn't have a problem dealing with opposing teams. If there are any other unwritten rules in the NFL, comment them down below and send this video to your favorite NFL player to remind them of these rules. Thanks for watching and like this video.